Hello, Good Shepherd and Saints Francis and John. I'm Deacon Mike Lynch with Good Shepherd Church. This week we prepare with the Gospel message for the fourth Sunday of Lent, a reading from the Gospel according to Luke. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus, but the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them Jesus addressed this parable. A man had two sons, and the younger son said to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all of his belongings and set off to a distant country where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens who sent him to his farm to tend the swine. And he longed to eat his fill of the pods on which the swine fed, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, how many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat? But here am I, dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he got up and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants quickly, bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fattened calf and slaughter it. Let us celebrate with a feast, because this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son had been out in the field, and on his way back, as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, Your brother has returned, and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf, because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry. And when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, Look, all these years I served you, and not once did I disobey your orders. You never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up all your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughter the fattened calf. You said to him, My son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But we must celebrate and rejoice because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. This story of the father and his two sons, also called the parable of the prodigal son, has so many interesting details among the three characters. But I would like to focus on the father and how he responds to his sons. The younger son wasn't entitled to inheritance before his father's death, but the father acknowledges his son's free will and gives him his share. After a wasteful life, the son returns with confession on his lips, but the father has been watching for his son to return. He's overjoyed and celebrates. The Father is clearly a depiction of God the Father, sometimes seen as judgmental, even vengeful. But Jesus, trying to convince the unforgiving Pharisees and scribes, speaks of and demonstrates God's mercy, his willingness to sit down at a meal with sinners and draw them to him. The Father in the parable deals with unwillingness to forgive, too, from his older son, who wants to talk only about the failures and faults of the younger son. The older son is simply pointing out the facts, but the father isn't interested only in facts. He's interested in drawing both of his sons into a deeper life of love, conversion, 
and forgiveness. Here are some thoughts on some household and family discussion and activities. With your family, talk about a time when each of you felt lost. To find your way back to your family and God, did you have to admit that you were wrong? Was your family and God merciful? How did you feel when you were again in right relationship with your family? Hopefully, we all strive to do good, and the more we try to do the right thing, we can more easily recognize when others do wrong. Are you merciful and welcoming when others who want to repent and change the way of their lives? Are you ever tempted to resent others when they are forgiven after you've worked so hard to do the right thing? This week, reach out to a family member or friend who's been on the outside of your family's love and mercy. Offer them dinner with your family, or better yet, ask them to accompany your family to Mass. Open the doors of your home and your heart for those who want to return home the home in which you live, and the home of your faith and Holy Mass. God bless, and see you at Mass.